All right, y'all. Hey, this is Kate. This is some three of my favorite people on the planet. This is Katie. This is James. And this is Dan talking about model context protocol. Give it up. Ah, oh, all right. Okay. Cool. Is this on? Is this on? Is this on? That's good. That's working. It's working, okay, cool. I think. Yeah. You know, I think as we continue to evolve how we work and how we develop every single day and how we interact with LLMs, the one question that continues to come up, which is how do we provide these models and these tools with more context and the ability to perform actions on our behalf? So how do we give these models, these tools, real-time data, access to things that are pertinent to our businesses, no matter where we're developing and no matter what tools we're using? And that specifically is what Model Context Protocol is all about, is solving that problem and answering that question so we can work with our tools better and stay in the flow better no matter what we're using. So the real question is, what is Model Context Protocol? Well, as James said, MCP provides additional context to LLMs and provides them access to data, tools, and resources. So an easy way that you can think about this is MCP is kind of like a universal adapter, but for AI applications. So in the same way that a universal adapter would let you connect a physical device to different accessories, MCP lets you connect your AI applications to tools, data, and resources without writing custom connections for each of those data sources. So when we're talking about MCP, there's really three parts of this that you need to understand. The first one is our hosts, and these are programs like Visual Studio, Copilot Studio, or VS Code. And these are the things that want access to that data and those tools through the model context protocol. Next up, we have our protocol clients, and these can actually be the same things as those hosts sometimes, and they maintain a one-to-one -one connection with our servers. Servers are lightweight programs, and they are the things that are exposing those capabilities through the model context protocol. So a couple examples of these are you can connect directly to your database and analyze schemes, you can pull in information from GitHub repositories about different issues or pull requests. You can automate end-to-end -end testing with Playwright. Or you can even create your own servers and have them do pretty much anything. There's a ton of things that you can make them do. So let's take a look at a visual example of this before we get into any demos. Here we have our computer and we have the internet, just to keep it super duper simple. So from our editor with GitHub Copilot, we already have access to some tools that are built into this experience and extensions that let us do things like search our code base or do web searches, anything that's really natively built in. But with MCP, we can expand our toolkit and access a bunch of other things. So we can run MCP servers locally inside of an application or a Docker container and talk to our data there or they could be calling web services such as GitHub does to gather and create issues for you. And they can also be executed totally remotely over server sent events, which you might hear called SSEs. These remote servers can be run in Azure Functions, container apps, and app service, and they can be managed by API Management and API Center, which are both optimized for remote MCP servers. And the cool part about all of this is that this is an open standard. It's not a Microsoft thing. It was actually created originally by Anthropic. And companies around the entire ecosystem have worked closely with Anthropic to continue to evolve these uh, standards and these uh, different mechanisms as things evolve. And one of the common questions we often get is authentication. And how does that work, Dan? How does that work? So uh, for our MCP servers, one of the things that a lot of folks say is that if we're connecting to different APIs and services, uh, they're usually protected. And they're protected by some layer that requires you to authenticate to get that super secret confidential organization, uh, organizational information. So in the spec, in the actual MCP specification, what is baked in is this very clear separation between APIs and authorization servers that enables you to plug in your existing systems 
directly into MCP. So th this is kind of actually a misconception. People think that like, oh, MCP, I need to implement auth from scratch. You don't. We're snapping to OAuth 2.1. So if your authorization server, whether it's uh, Entry ID or any of the many open source ones, if you just plug them in, they just work. All your server, your MCP server needs to do is basically declare that I'm using this authorization server. And that's kind of it. It's magical. Yeah. And the cool part is that this is all evolving based on feedback alongside Anthropic and other companies around the industry to build these standards together into tools. So obviously we'll show VS and VS Code, but other things like Cloud Desktop, Windows itself, and other things are all different MCP clients and hosts. Let's go ahead and take a look at this in action really quick. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, come in to my VS Code over here. Now I have an application I've been building out. It's called Monkey App Vibes. And it's an application that's all about monkeys, basically. So it's a down in Maui application. I have some, uh, just some common uh, platform folders, resources, file new project, things like this. So at this point, I might be very interested in uh, understanding what GitHub issues I have, what I can work on, maybe I have new ideas for the application, and maybe I wanna also implement the application all up with agent mode. So a few things that I can do here. First is I have this MCP JSON file. Different tools such as VS Code and Visual Studio have different ways of configuring MCP servers, uh, and they're usually through JSON configurations. On the um, Model Context Protocol IO website, there's different links to different servers, and there's tons of them out there, including ones from here at Microsoft. So here we can see we have uh, my GitHub server, which is running in Docker right here, and it's using a personal access token today that I've created myself with different uh, permissions that the agent can use and run in this MCP server. I've also created and configured this monkey MCP server, which is very convenient for this application that's all about monkeys, and it happens to be a MCP server that I personally created because I love monkeys. So what can we do? Here, I can go ahead and say, uh, get me a list of my open issues on GitHub. Uh, well, this is probably just gonna now go off to the internet and it's gonna look here and it's gonna say, hey, list issues and specifically the monkey app vibes repo because it knows about me. So I'm gonna give it permission to run that command and it's gonna go off and say, I have one open issue. There's one open issue, which is a list of monkey pages. So I'm a developer. I no longer have to leave my flow no matter where I'm at. I might just be somewhere, not in VS Code, some other editor, Cloud Desktop, something like that. But I can say, okay, uh, get me a list of monkeys uh, here. So now this is gonna go off and what GitHub Copilot's doing is it's looking to see what tools are available. And in agent mode down here, we see this little tool selection. And this is what is built in to VS Code to show you what's available. Copilot has tools that it's running. Here's the MCP server for GitHub with all the tools that it can call and you can turn these on and off and here's one for the monkey MCP. So the LLM says, natural language, I wanna get a list of monkeys. Oh, I have a tool that can get a list of monkeys here. So I can go ahead and run that, and it's gonna run that command. It's gonna get me a list of monkeys. Now I can also do a, a hashtag pound sign, and it'll show me all of those tools as well. So that looks good, and I can say, uh, visualize that, visualize that, here in chat in a table for me. Okay, cool. It's gonna now show me a list of these monkeys, right? I'm iterating over my data that's here. Now this could have been an API that I can figure, but maybe this is a database. Maybe this is a schema. I don't know what this is, but the LLM is figuring this stuff out me. So I can say, what is the JSON schema here, right? So it's gonna go figure it out. Here it is, amazing. Now. The MCP server is just returning data back to me, but the LLM is figuring out how to visualize it for me. If I go back up here, we can see exactly what the MCP server returned. It's just a bunch of data, but the model is figuring this out for me. I could say, what would this look like in COBOL? Question mark, right? It's now gonna take that and it's gonna go figure out what this looks like in COBOL. I don't know what that is, but now I just learned what that looks like in COBOL. That's cool. So now this is amazing. I can say, okay, take the context of this code base and uh, look at that open issue and create a new comment with implementation details for me, okay? 
So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna say, take the context of my application, and now GitHub Copilot's gonna search the code base, it's gonna go figure out what exactly I need to implement in this application, and it's gonna go create a new comment on this issue for me based on what I need to implement based on this monkey data, right? And it's gonna look and say, oh, I don't have any of this data. It's gonna look for pages, it's gonna look for results, and it's gonna go off, and now it's going to see everything that I need to do, and it's gonna keep searching stuff, uh, and then it's going to eventually create an issue for me at some point of how to do this. It's very, 4.1 is very interested in doing this. It's thorough. It's very thorough, right? So it's going through, it's doing stuff, awesome, very chatty. Awesome, good, good, great, awesome, doing stuff, right? So I'm in the flow, I'm just figuring out what I need to do, and now we have a new issue, I can click on it, and now I could come back later and actually implement this. So here's all this detailed information, I had to leave my flow, Caitlin. So there we go, taking photos. So that's really cool, but I could have it envision anything for me, right? Uh, let's uh, maybe open a new issue on how to implement uh, a camera control in this app to snap photos of, of monkeys in the wild, right? So it's gonna go off, it's gonna search, like the nice thing is 4.1's gonna search the vast amount of internet and know about my Donna Maui application, and it's gonna go ahead and create new issues for me automatically. It's gonna know more context and write things faster and I could iterate with it for everything that I need to do in real time, right? So it's really, really powerful to be able to go off and do this. And now I could go say, hey, go and implement uh, issue number one here. Go do it now, please. And now it's gonna go take everything that I was working on, implement this. I could have it close the issue for me and do everything because now I'm back in agent mode and it's gonna go off and we'll see what it does after we come back from slides, right? So that sort of power of going in and staying in the flow is really, really powerful. And there's all sorts of MCPs. Here's one for Figma, for example, that the Maui team put together. It's configured up, we have an, a Figma design and we're inside of Hot Reload here. So what's happening is we just say, hey, listen, go take this Figma implementation, go grab it using the Figma MCP server Go find that design, grab the resources, grab all the design specs, and pull that into my application. So it invokes this Figma for me automatically, and it goes off and will then implement this design in near real time uh, in the application, which is so cool. So it goes off, does its thing, I sped it up a whole bunch, it's going, 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 and boom, we basically have our entire application written for us. Uh, that looks beautiful, and boom, it's right there. Per pixel perfect design. Awesome, yeah, and as we mentioned earlier, you can build your own servers, and you can really do this for anyone. You could build it for your company, for other developers, for your friends, whatever. And there are SDKs for just about every programming language out there, and here at Microsoft, we actually maintain the C Sharp SDK. Now, what's really cool is that you can build not only client applications like GitHub Copilot, so if you could embed and you can have your applications talk to MCP servers, but you can also actually create these servers with different types of transports. Right. There's different types that have different implications. Right, right. So if you're running local and you're doing SCDIO, uh, you can just get it right out of the box. If you're running remote servers with uh, server-side events or streamable HTTP, which by the way, made it in recently, nice. you can also do that. And we even have a pull request for, guess what? Authorization. It's, it's gonna be there. We're gonna make it very secure out of the box so you can have your MCP server, make sure that it securely connects to your data and gets it to your client. Now what's cool here is that there's a few different NuGet packages for C-sharp.net developers, a standard one, and then one based on ASP.net Core for doing those remote servers like Den was talking about. It's really super simple to get easy. In fact, it's literally less than 35 seconds, which is what we have left. Create a new console application, add the new packages into it, and a Microsoft extension hosting. From here, we have a few using statements, and all we gotta do is start to build up our application. Our app builder, here what we'll do is use standard IO in this case, because I'm gonna run it locally on my machine. 
and I have a scan this assembly for tools, and then I build it up. From there, I just start creating MCP tools. These are the APIs that the LLMs are gonna call. Here I can create an echo one. I give it a description and a name, and that's what GitHub Copilot and the LLMs will look at to invoke to return a string. Reverse a string, same exact thing. You can go off and easily create any of these, call your APIs, do anything that you want inside of there. What's great is if I have more time, I could show you all this stuff, but we have links at the end to the monkey repo. There's tons of things happening in MCP from Microsoft, Anthropic, and the entire community, whether you're building, whether you're using, um, whether you're looking to host. There's amazing things happening in APIM and API Center, it's API Management API Center, to take your existing REST APIs and turn them into MCP servers. But there's so much more you can do since these can run, crunch data, call LLMs, do anything that you want to expose your data and make it available to these LLM to make super powerful um, tools that all people can use, whether they're developers or end users. Here's a bunch of links and other sessions. There's also hands-on labs and on labs on demand to learn more. We'll be around to do so much more to talk about MCP. There's an MCP booth, so come check it all out. We hope you have a great build and come talk to us about MCPs and go build some awesome stuff. Thank you.